Welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video all in crypto here and today we are going to be talking about the real web 3. Now this is a term that I think often gets misrepresented uh, and I'm going to be talking to you about my vision for the next internet uh, web 3 and of course blockchain is a big part of it um, and not perhaps in a way that many of you may be thinking you know when you think about web 3 you think about these layer 1 smart contract protocols but actually the web 3 in my opinion is the decentralization of the internet and what do i mean by that because some of you are going to be going okay well the internet is decentralized anybody can use it anybody can utilize it and that is true but who owns and enables the internet it's the likes of amazon it's the likes of google it's the likes of Microsoft and these big, biggest companies in the world that ultimately have a monopoly over the infrastructure that runs the internet. And what is that infrastructure? It's things like network. It's things like data storage. It's things like cloud computing. These are the things that make the internet possible. And thus, these things essentially or these pieces of hardware are in often cases software so this isn't maybe just specific to deep in um, which of course we highlighted as one of the biggest opportunities to present itself in the crypto space and i think we've seen lots of people talking about it since we brought it up um, i don't think they watch my video i think people are just actually cottoning onto it we we're not that big-headed um, but this the internet in its current form is essentially enabled by the largest companies in the world and that's why they are the largest companies in the world the internet is so important you know web 2 is so important it's where we get our information from it's where we're communicating on right now it's how people communicate no one sends a letter anymore people send an email or a text or something like this and the people that own the infrastructure that enables that have a monopoly over it and thus are exceptionally powerful why do you think america is the most powerful nation in the world it's really because of the companies that come out of it and actually the companies that it enables. You know, if you look at a lot of these companies that run key infrastructure for the internet, they are, and you'll find at some point they had some sort of government involvement and acceptance and um, propul uh, propulsion, propellant, you know, um, and actually it doesn't just stop as the infrastructure. You know, you have these big server farms that's owned by the likes of Amazon and things like this. It doesn't just stop at the infrastructure, which blockchain is, is, is seeking to, to rival and disrupt and ultimately hopefully build the next generation of the internet, which is a decentralized one where you own your data. Um, it also goes for things like social medias. We are through distributed ledgers facilitating things like decentralized social medias and all the things that we currently have on the internet in a decentralized manner and utilizing blockchain and distributed ledger technology. So not only are we rebuilding and incentivizing through tokens, the infrastructure that enables the internet, like data farms, like um, compute systems, whether that be GPU or CPUs. Why do you think NVIDIA is the fourth largest company in the world? You know, it's no coincidence that OpenAI is now a thing and Sora came out and you have all this kind of stuff going on. Um, you know, we are now, we've came up with a way through tokenization and distributed ledgers to enable the decentralization and take back the power from these cloud lords in the same way that Bitcoin sought to take back the power from the corrupt central banks and governments that ultimately play a proliferation game that is solely there for your impoverishment and to keep you where you are. This is all fascinating stuff. This movement is far bigger than Bitcoin, which is why we always clown the Bitcoin maxis. In fact, they didn't even listen to somebody who many of them think was Satoshi Nakamoto, Hal Finney, who said that Bitcoin is a global distributed ledger and there are far broader applications for a global distributed ledger. And we're seeing that today. This movement that was spawned, and I love Bitcoin, you know, we're long Bitcoin. I'm, I'm skeptical about the origins of it. And we've done lots of videos on that. I think there's a lot more nefarious origins behind it. We've even compared the rise of Bitcoin to how the Federal Reserve System started, uh, problem, reaction, solution, this kind of stuff. 
but we are now building and what I think Web3 is the rebuilding or the distribution of the internet and the infrastructure that enables it um, and actually some of the software that takes place on top of it that we can build once we've figured out a way of decentralizing the infrastructure that enables it. So things like social media platforms, things like streaming platforms is of the utmost importance. Because ultimately if we, if the internet is essentially enabled by five or six companies, they can push whatever agenda they want. They have a monopoly over it. They can push whatever narrative they want. And they're careful to do it, by the way. It's very subtle, but you can boil a frog. You know, not to talk about what they're doing to the frogs. But um, this is really interesting. This whole thing, this whole movement, the Bitcoin spawn, through a distributed ledger. And this is why things need tokens, because you incentivize people to do this. And actually, the way the world is moving is towards a totally different kind of economy. I mean, when you think about AI and the jobs that that misplaces, and then you think about robonomics and, you know, kind of machinery. Like if you look at, for example, the agricultural revolution, when we saw the implementation of machines, that left millions of people without jobs because machines replaced them. There's about to be a similar revolution. And the, answer, and, and the real interesting question to that is, well, what do we then move on to? You know, what's the kind of new economy that spawns out of that? What's the new labor market? Although it might not even be a labor market because just like the agricultural revolution, the labor got kind of displaced as a result of it. So the emergence of blockchain technology is kind of divine, I guess, you know, because it's opening up entirely new avenues and really almost weirdly fitting the, the, the world that we're moving towards or maybe shaping it. You know, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but Web3 for me, and this is why some of the biggest sectors I'm interested in as it relates to the cryptocurrency space, is decentralized physical infrastructure. Also software, things like AI systems. AI is literally going to be your teacher. It's gonna teach you. And actually we've seen with Gemini just how biased it is to one kind of people and, and perhaps not another. I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole. Um, I can feel my subscriber count dropping by the second. Um, but, you know, it, it, Web3, if you think about the internet, the internet is basically enabled by hardware for the most part, whether that be network, telecommunications, whatever it may be, um, you know, data storage server farms, cloud computing server farms, GPU server farms like NVIDIA, you know, they enable the internet, they ultimately rule it as a result of it and have a large sway over it. We're looking to decentralize that in the same way that Bitcoin's looking to decentralize and, and provide an alternative money. And it's doing that through token incentives and a distributed ledger. And that is fascinating. And that is an amazing opportunity that presents itself. And we're going to try and help you guys realize that opportunity um, and potentially be investors or certainly admirers of the infrastructure of tomorrow. You know, this movement doesn't stop with Bitcoin. It goes far beyond it. Um, and that's exciting. And, you know, this is why we love the crypto space. It's always been applicable to me. I think when I came across Chainlink, or I must say actually probably Ethereum with smart contracts, um, and Ethereum wasn't the, the second altcoin to Bitcoin. There was things like Namecoin and Peercoin and NXT and, or BLX and all these other coins that, that came before it. Um, even things like Dogecoin, I think, actually was before Ethereum. But Ethereum introduced this entirely new application of a distributed ledger. And then Chainlink for me was, was when I was really like, wow, this is going far beyond just accounting money. You know, we're now accounting knowledge and the verifiability and trustability of it with the likes of Chainlink. And actually, it's going to go even, be even further than that in regards to we're now going to be incentivizing running and tracking our own infrastructure to build the next generation of the internet and more fair and, and less censorship and um, uh, data, you know, hoarding and, and extracting system. I mean, there are going to be, of course, elements of, of distraction. Also, if you look at what's happening with distributed ledgers, we're moving toward the internet of things. So right now we're communicating on the internet of people, really, the internet of information, which is between us. I'm communicating with you, you know, so on and so forth. It's kind of between people, really. But we are going to move towards a world where the Internet of Things is going to become a thing. There's going to be a blockchain element in that. It's amazing to me, as somebody that stumbled on this industry back in the days of Silk Road, 
just how far it's come and just the sheer broadness of the applications that it is going to facilitate and enable. It's kind of the piece to the futuristic puzzle that many of us have been waiting for and I don't want to go too much on from here um, but this is what Web3 is and people often say, think it's a layer one or it's a this. No, it's everything combined. It's the decentralization of the infrastructure that runs the internet through distributed ledgers. It's the decentralization of social media through distributed ledgers. It's the decentralization of contracts. It's the decentralization of information. It's the everything wrapped up into one thing that we are going to call Web3. And the opportunities that are going to come out of this, guys, are going to be immense. It's changed my life. I believe it can do the same for yours. Guys, on that note, I'm going to love and leave you. If you enjoyed the content, like is appreciated. So is a comment. If you want to find out what I'm holding, do consider becoming a patron. And on that note, I'm going to love and leave you. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next.